Hey everybody, Craig from the University of Applied Research and Development, and it's a privilege to have Dan with us, who's a co-founder of Make Stuff Move. Hi, Dan. Hey, how are you? Incredibly excited to, to learn about the story of how you and why you created Make Stuff Move. Tell us about that. Well, for me, um, since I was a kid, I always liked um, getting out in the shop and exploring and finding the bits and pieces that were around the stuff I had access to. Uh, being like an 80s kid, um, you know, there wasn't quite as many like building toys and that sort of thing. Um, so for me, it was whatever was around. Um, and I was always drawn to, you know, hence the business name, making stuff move. So it was really, in most cases, about motors. Um, but what I kind of, going back to that, realized was um, as much as it's good to be challenged, there's, you know, when, when a kid hits a wall, it can be a bit of a problem. And for me, I always hit a wall when I wanted to attach something to the motor itself or attach the motor into my project. It sent, that's where I ended up kind of frustrated. Um, and then fast forward till, you know, I'm uh, 39 now, uh, a few years ago, um, I started getting back into robotics with the whole kind of increase in things like Arduinos and micro bits and just all this robotics and STEM. And I mean, kids these days are very fortunate. I can say that with what's available. Um, but I got back into it for myself as, as a hobbyist and hit the same problem. So for me, um, and I've got one of them here. So our company started actually with a thing called a servo sock. And what that came from was to try to solve this problem of mounting a motor. So inside this block, um, and I'll explain what the block's made of in a minute here. Um, is a micro servo. So these are very common. You're seeing them in education, robotics, that sort of thing, but it's tedious to mount. It's got little tiny holes, this little output shaft here, this they call the servo horns, really uh, finicky. And for me, again, I want to be able to mount these things um, using whatever I had available. So when I was getting sick of making brackets, even as you know, an adult with a shop now, that's where I am right now, um, it was still frustrating. So the original idea and where the name servo socks comes from is it was more like a little bottom that just went over the servo and gave you some material that you could use to screw it down with. But uh, the output shaft was also a problem. So that's where this block came from that we just still call a servo sock. It's a catchy name um, where you have this disc that goes on the end and another disc can go on the other side for kind of a bearing support. And the thing just clicks together. It's a bit of a pressure fit. Now you've got this block that's made of a, um, it's something we developed with a local injection molder. Um, it's a combination of recycled plastic and cork. Um, and the cork itself is from production scraps. So we're trying to be as sustainable as possible. Um, and this behaves a lot like a composite wood. So you can put a screw into this, you can drill holes, you can cut the corners off. So basically you mount it into your project however you want. Um, and then this disc that you have now has these holes that you can take, I'll pull one out here. Um, you know, we have these sticks that we put in our kits that can just mount on there really easily using regular screws and hardware and that sort of thing. So it's kind of in the same vein of, of um, you know, why I started with this idea. Um, any questions before I keep going there? Yeah, that's fantastic. I'm, I'm excited to learn more about what you're doing now with this. This is, this is innovation. So where it went to was, I mean, for me, being somebody who had the problem, it was like, great. And when I went to, um, we were launched this at Maker Fair Bay Area um, in 2019. It was the last year of it. And of course, there's people there that were excited because they've used servos before. Like take the Halloween crowd that want to put, um, I mean, I have it sitting here. I had this at my booth, this skeleton. This is our first edition of servo socks, like a red plastic. But, you know, be able to make something that could move around and the jaw would go. Um, it becomes increasingly easier when you can mount them in. That's great. But that's a very small group of people that that have the problem already. So what kind of became evident to me was, let's get this into the education system. When I started talking to educators, um, I, I was excited. I was like, you know, I've got these blocks and you can just go to the hardware store and you can buy screws and you can get this. And they're like, great, but I don't want to go get that stuff. How about you package it up so that we can just buy the whole thing and we're ready to go in the classroom. And on top of that, as much as in some cases they really do like that open-ended uh, building, having some lessons and something to kind of start with is important. So that's where the whole make stuff move concept came from, was building these whole kits where you're making stuff move. And I mean, that's really the, the name, the name came from this little literal idea where I just kept saying that statement all the time. And I was like, oh, maybe that's probably a good business name. So we got the domain and kind of ran with it. 
Um, so that's where we've really taken this to now is providing, you know, we have these nice toolbox kits um, and they've got an Arduino controller. Um, they've got the, uh, if you want it, you can have a battery, but the whole thing runs off USB uh, for power. And then all the bits and pieces and tools you need to build three projects. Um, and the idea behind that is that's kind of your solid like foundation that you can build from there. Tell us about some of the projects that students can make um, using the materials. Yeah, so I actually have a couple of them here. Uh, one of them, for example, is an analog meter. I don't have that one with me, but it's the simplest project, um, which the, the analog meter hooks up to a sound sensor. And then you see so your idea is, is like if you think about, um, I mean, kids would probably call it old school now, but the old school stereos that had the needle on them that would go. Um, so that's the, the idea of how that project works. And that's usually the first one that they do in classrooms. Uh, and then we have this inchworm. So the idea is this can, uh, you know, walk its way across the table. And what's neat about it, to sidestep for a second, is the control board in these kits. Uh, it's Arduino-based, which I love Arduino, but even as, as somebody who has a technical background, um, I found that um, it's still intimidating. Like, just having to plug something into your computer and make sure it's the software is on there, and then, like, the first time you do it, and especially in classroom environments, now you need a computer lab. You need that kind of a bunch of prep. So what we do is we take the board. I've got one here. Um, it's an Arduino with our custom shield on it. If I hold it up there, it should grab focus on it. Um, and it's preloaded with code. So we put code on it so the first experience with the kits doesn't involve a computer or coding. So that you're more focusing on the mm. making stuff move, the hands-on component of this. Um, and I'll come back to that in a minute. I'll show you this last project, and then we'll uh, I'll dive into kind of my methodology behind why the company is the way it is. Uh, the third project you can build, it's called a Flinger Drummer. At the time, my daughter was four. She named it for me. And uh, the idea of this is kind of like a, <laughs> she's also very literal. Um, it's, a, it's like a drum pedal. So the idea is you can fling stuff. You can put pennies on here or buttons or whatever, and you can launch them. Or you can set this thing up to tap on things and make music, so like a glass of water, that sort of thing. And what that plays off of is that the code that comes on this board has there's a record and a play button. So you can hit record, turn the knobs and make your project move, and then hit stop, and then play it back to loop it. So now you can animate your projects without having to write code to, to do that sort of thing, which even in robotics, that's a big challenge, having to like, you know, if you want to have this worm move that's a lot of try it out upload it a lot of back and forth with the computer so this allows it to again remain very hands-on um and where that leads into is that really what our unique you know call it selling point or marketing point is with this company is that we're trying to promote the skilled trades as much as we promote stem so i mean it, it's becoming more and more important these days we're really seeing that lack of of people in the trades and it's becoming a big problem because we need electricians, we need plumbers, we need carpenters, we need you know all of these hands-on skills. And if we don't encourage the youth to get into that, we're going to be in a worse place than we are already. Um, what we're finding is that everything's you know all STEM, and I, I mean I think STEM's great. I'm I'm very much into math and science, and I mean your STEAM if you want to include the art. My background is animation and, and classical art. Um, but I want to make sure that we're equally promoting these hands-on skills. So that's what these kits are kind of doing is in the classrooms where it is difficult to deliver on this as well, because you need a whole wood shop, these very expensive classrooms to, to give the, the kids a taste of this. So all we're doing is at least giving them something, an opportunity to pick up a screwdriver, to know what a wood screw is, a machine screw, that sort of thing. I love that they're learning the terminology, the equipment that goes into it, as well as literally making things move in front of them. So there's so much theoretical, though, that is there. The knowledge is there. It's actually practical. They can see they're learning demonstrated and making things move. Tell us about some of the um, some of the ways that what you've done with the kits connects to different industries so that educators that are watching this can see that industry connection. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it's really simplistic, but that's the point is that that little introduction to becoming more familiar with what you might see when you walk into, say, a hardware store. So even within our lessons, um, actually, I'll, I'll tell a little story about really how it applies to, say, construction. 
Um, one of the teachers that's one of, you know, she's been with uh, using our products for the longest at this point. And we have two screwdriver bits in the kit. So there's a Phillips and a Robertson. I'm not sure if you have Robertson over, over there, but uh, it's a very Canadian screw bit. Um, and I was saying, you know, you only need the Phillips for just adjusting the one sensor. We don't really use them. I think I'll take them out of the kit. So I was picking her brain to see if that was a good idea. And she said, no, absolutely not. You need to leave that in there. She said, because when I start the lessons with the student, I expect and why it's important to understand that, you know, why you pick the right screw bit when you're going to use a screw. And of course, you know, a handful of students end up very frustrated and kind of pissed off because they're trying to put the screws in their projects and they won't go in. And then she says, which one are you using? Right. Like, so it's that it, sometimes it's these simple lessons. Um, so, I mean, that applies to carpentry, electrical, plumbing. Um, and then, I mean, another example is when we start the lessons, there's machine screws, which involve using a nut, and then there's wood screws. So explaining that difference to kids so that they, uh, and again, I've seen, you know, students try to put the nut on a wood screw. Well, that's not going to work. And again, they get frustrated and they call me over and this doesn't work and they get kind of grumbly. And it's like, well, are you using the right one? And here's, you know, if they don't quite get it, it's an opportunity to explain and teach them about that. Um, and the one thing, I mean, it's very heavy on probably woodworking principles, but I always like to talk to the students about things like drilling a pilot hole. So, you know, with our servo socks, especially this new material, um, the kits come with, I'll open one of them up here, it comes with a drill bit because, um, you know, that's a, that's a woodworking principle. So, you I mean, we're keeping it simple. We're not giving kids electric drills yet, but it just goes in the screwdriver and that allows you to just get a hole started into your material. And that's, again, one of these things that if you're going to be a carpenter, um, whether it's fine furniture or building houses, the, the idea of drilling a pilot hole is very important. Um, or even putting a screw, if you're going to screw, say, this onto this, don't try to hold it and fumble around with your screws. Put the screws into the one piece first and have them poking through. It's, again, a very simple principle, but when you kind of wrap your head around some of those things, it's amazing how much really that does apply to, you know, carpentry, for example. Um, I mean, even going into make stuff move that's what i was doing was building furniture pieces and that sort of things and it's those principles that when you know them allows you to get really far on projects when you know about clamping and screwing and drilling holes and how to measure properly um, those are basic fundamentals are really what leads you into this and the rest you just get better at with experience can you share with some of the secret upcoming Kits sure. Or, um, develop things you have in development. Yeah. So um, there's a few. I'll, I'll show two of them that are kind of like not a not a big secret. Or do I have one of them here? No, oh, I don't think I do. Under my my good. Oh, I do. In my goodie box here. Uh, one of them is this, um, and this one's neat because it it ties between. I'll see if I can get it if I put it right in front of my face. The camera will grab it. There we go. Um, this one hooks up to a pulse sensor, and it synchronizes with your heartbeat. So it's a very engaging project, um, and it's neat. It kind of crosses over into the biology side of, of you know, the science in the science side of it. But what's neat too is it's it's still teaching again some of the woodworking principles and putting it together, but also a rack and pinion. So this is something that's used in say automotive or that type of mechanical equipment, and turning rotational movement into linear movement. So when the gear in the middle turns, um, you're getting, you know, like that opens up like that. So trying to bridge between those two disciplines. Another one we're doing is a flower. Um, so it's a flower that's made of, again, very common parts. I don't have one of those with me, unfortunately. Um, but it's a flower that, that uses a light sensor to open up like a flower would for the sunshine in the morning type of thing. So you shine a light at it, the flower opens up. Now, oh, it's magic. I will talk about something I just like just came up with, but I think it's neat. Um, I was talking to over here in, in Ontario, um, uh, the Ontario Power Generation, a little bit at a, an event the other night, and also to one of the, that same educator I was talking about, um, where we were looking at actual bridges between the curriculum and, and what we're doing. And the, the topic we were on was electricity. So learning about AC versus DC, what resistors do, um, electrical conductivity, like those types of things. And I was kind of racking my brain, how can we make an engaging, fun project to help hit some of those curriculum points? Um, and what I've come up with so far, and so, I mean, it's that new of an idea, I haven't fully fleshed it out, is the idea of power generation. So what's neat, of course, is that if you think about, you know, a wind turbine, 
Uh, hydroelectric, I believe even nuclear is generating heat, which is used to create steam, and then the steam runs a turbine. So a lot of power generation is done by turning a generator, which is really just a motor working in reverse. You're spinning the shaft and it, it outputs power. So I have a version of a servo sock or a special servo that can go in here that when you uh, put it in and hook it up to the sensor pins on the board, which those sensor pins that are reading pulse or sound or light are basically reading voltage, just like a generator would output. So we'll have a kit where there's a little generator turbine blade or something the kids get to build that goes on the servo sock. You can spin it by hand. I mean, if they really want to try to get it outside in the wind or that type of thing, they could. Um, and what that does is it lights up the light on the board. And if you hook up the analog meter, it shows on the meter how much power you're generating. So um, I think that's going to be a really interesting project is, is, you know, this whole idea of sustainability and, and how something we use every day is being created. Love it. So Dan, we've had uh, your Instagram account and also your website shown on the screen as you've been sharing and talking about Make Stuff Move. What's the best way for people to get hold of you? Uh, so through the, uh, our website, there's a chat. Um, we've got our email on the website. You can reach me directly at dan at makestuffmove.com. Um, and then we're on Instagram. We're on, um, I'd, I'd say Instagram is the main platform that, uh, that we're on, act, you know, the most active on. So you can DM us and reach out or, um, yeah, the website is a good one. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, look, I do want to thank you very much, Dan, for, for giving your time and sharing the kits and how Big Stuff Move came to be and giving some of the a secret insight to what's coming up as well. Really do appreciate your time, and um, I look forward to Make Stuff Move coming to New Zealand as well in the near future. Yeah, I think it'd be a good excuse for me to take a trip over there. <laughs> We would certainly make you welcome. I always say that New Zealand is like a small Canada. Yeah, that fit right in then. Thanks so much for your time. And everybody else is watching the recording or seeing it live on one of our platforms. Thanks very much for joining us. We look forward to having you again on one of our UARD Educators podcasts. Mm -hmm.